you're on outside the Beltway, and that's the place to be, and that's where we are live in Lynchburg, Virginia, beautiful Lynchburg, at Liberty University, one of the most gorgeous campuses you're ever going to see on this wonderful spring day. It is so great to walk around campus and just see students going from class to class. So last year when I was here, it was closed like everybody else. It's just wonderful to see students and bustling and professors and people getting ready for baseball practice. Just uh, fabulous to see here at Liberty University. And uh, we're going to be here for the next three days. My radio show will be here as well. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. The John Frederick Show. Trucking the Truth every day. All you have to do, download my free app on Android. Go to Google Play on your app phone, your iPhone. Go to the App Store. Put in John Frederick Show. Boom, you're there. 6 to 10, Monday to Friday. Don't miss it. We'll be here live at Liberty University for the Equity African Summit. They're putting on by former congressman and dean of the business school, Dave Bratt, some very high profile people here. So you want to check that out. And we'll be doing our TV show outside the Beltway on Real America's Voice right here at Liberty University today and tomorrow. But my radio show, Three Days. Joining us now, we're going to go to Montana. We keep getting further and further outside the Beltway. We've got to go all the way to Montana to get Dr. John Lott, who has been uh, the centerpiece here in trying to get underneath what is very likely to be some potential Montana voter fraud. Let me set the stage for this. These, these mail-in ballots are something else. We're going through the same thing, as you know, with an audit in Fulton County, Georgia. We're going through the same thing with a complete audit of all ballots in Maricopa County in Arizona. Now in Montana, Dr. John Lott finds out, get this, there's more mail-in ballots in Montana than there are envelopes that the ballots by law have to come in. So logically, let me get out my abacus, Dr. Lott, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, basic math here. Right. How can you have more mail-in ballots, Dr. Lott, than more mail-in envelopes? How's that work? Well, you're right. You're not supposed to have it. And if you do have it, you're not supposed to count them. But they have about 6.3% more votes than they have ballots. And then even for the envelopes that they have, there are other issues that are there. Uh, some of them don't have dates. Some of them don't have signatures that have been checked or signatures. Uh, you add all that up, you're talking about over 7% of the votes. And there are still other issues that they weren't allowed to ad address in the audit that was done. Uh, it looked like there were a number of signatures that were the same. There was one nursing home uh, where it looked like 28 uh, envelopes had the same signature on them. Uh, there are literally dozens of other envelopes that looked like they had similar signatures on it. But because of the COVID type rules and they weren't allowed to go and, and share the ballots or share pictures of the envelopes with others, uh, there were real issues that were there. So. Unfortunately, there's one other problem that's there too, and that is um, they erase the video of uh, opening of the ballots as well as the counting that's there. Uh, they were put on notice even before the election that there was going to be this review of the envelopes. Uh, and under Montana law, if you have a Freedom of Information Act request that might result in some type of litigation, they're supposed to keep all relevant information there, but um, we're not sure whether they just erased the video or they purposely deleted it, but uh, it surely would have made it easier to go and deal with this because you could watch the video and count uh, the envelopes there. So there's no chain of custody issues or what have you, and the fact that uh, the video is not there anymore is, is disappointing to say the least. So, Dr. Lott, let me let me just get this straight. So, you did an audit, and uh, you found that uh, uh, almost seven percent of the mail-in ballots didn't have envelopes. By law, you have to have an envelope. So, how did they get there? That's number one. Number two, you found out that uh, there was video missing uh, somehow when they were counting these these uh, these uh, unaccounted for ballots with no chain of custody, and the, you went to the video, and all of a sudden the video is gone. Right? How convenient. Right. I'm sure it was an honest mistake. Somebody hit the wrong button, just like Rosemary and Richard Nixon's tapes, right? You just hit the wrong button, sure. And uh, you see what happened to him. So the tapes go away. Oh, there's no way to see what exactly happened. This is in Montana. So nobody really thinks about voter fraud in Montana because right. you figure out ah, that's Republican anyway, although you have a Democratic senator 
So now, you, now you're going through this other audit, but all of it, all the excuses were because of COVID. So does it seem like the Democrats just basically took COVID and used it as a weapon in order to exploit every possible method of cheating in 2020? Well, I mean, the thing is, I mean, you mentioned a couple other audits that are going on right now, but right now, uh, Missoula, Montana has been the only county that they've had a complete review of all the envelopes. Uh, in Maricopa County, while they're going to be going and doing a much thorough review, a judge right now has only allowed them to look at 100 of the about 2 million uh, envelopes that are there. In Cobb County, which as you mentioned, isn't even the county of focus in Georgia. Uh, Fulton County, where Atlanta is, was the county of concern. Uh, the Secretary of State looked at 10% of the envelopes that were there. But it's only by looking at all the envelopes and counting them that you could find out that there was this gap between the number of recorded votes and the number of envelopes. And as you say, by law, that's illegal to have a vote counted without an envelope because you, there's no signature to check. There's no date to check. Um, and so you don't know what to do with those, uh, with those envelopes, with those ballots. Because the signature is across the seal on the back of the envelope. That's correct. Right? I mean, that's where the signatures are. The signature is not on the ballot. Nobody would ever sign a ballot because you have a secret ballot. That's the way our republic works. Our democracy is set up so we have a secret ballot but your signature is on the outside of the envelope okay. so if there's no envelope to match a ballot that means there's no signature so the ballot shouldn't be counted because there's no way to verify it could be anybody i mean i could be basically printing up ballots and dropping them off in a box right. and there's no chain of custody and they just get hand delivered stuffed in these drop boxes but if there's no envelope they're not counted because there's no record of who voted, of who voted. Right. So they were counted anyway. That's how you got the 7%. And Dr. Lutt, so what is going to be the outcome here? I mean, what's the conclusion? Right. What happens? Uh, let me just uh, tell you a bit more background. Missoula is the second most populous county in the state. When you're talking about 7% of the votes, whether it's by error or by ballot stuffing, there are a number of local races that were decided by much less than 7%. But when you're talking about the second most populous county in the state, it's possible it could even swing statewide elections that are there. And surely the number of votes that we're talking about here have been larger than the vote difference in many recent elections uh, at the state level there. Um, well, as far as what's going on, the Secretary of State uh, met with the individuals who had done the review. Um, there's a local lawyer named Quentin Rhodes uh, who headed up the effort. He's been involved in election politics for years. He's represented green candidates on the ballot, represented independents. In this case, uh, he was representing a Republican uh, state representative who is from uh, Missoula. Uh, but, you know, Quentin's just a clean government type. It's kind of hard to pigeonhole him as being with one party or the other. And uh, uh, so the governor made a statement, and then the Secretary of State last week uh, met with uh, Quentin and others who had conducted the review and has expressed concern and basically had her whole staff in on the meeting. And they're looking through a lot of the documents right now. Uh, the problem is trying to get information out of the county. Uh, so, it, you know, there's a good chance that they'll be having to go and get the attorney general involved. And, uh, and there's also a chance uh, those getting very near the end of the state legislature, that there'll be hearings uh, in the state Senate on this. Members of the state Senate uh, committees, like the Judiciary Committee, were also present at the meeting. You know, Dr. Lott, this is just a recurring thing, right? You try to do an audit, everybody's fighting it. The county fights it, the city fights it, the election officials fight it, uh, the Secretary of State fights it, the Attorney General fights it. Um, what? And you have to ask yourself why. I mean, if I'm in a county, if I'm in Missoula County, and I'm part of the election team there, whether it be elected or appointed or not, and I know that I had a clean election, and right. I didn't take fraudulent ballots, and I didn't stuff them and have boxes without chains of custody and things of that nature, wouldn't I welcome an audit? Wouldn't I say, hey, I want an audit 
so my department can get cleared and exonerated and be congratulated for doing great work? Why am I spending taxpayer dollars in court, all these counties, whether it's Arizona, Georgia, Montana, you name it, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, they're all the same. They spend all this money, your tax dollars, Dr. Lott, in court, stopping transparency. Right. If well, you have nothing to hide, why, why are you trying to hide it, Dr. Lott? Right. Well, I mean, the group that reviewed the ballots uh, tried to do so immediately after the election. Uh, the county kept on putting it off, and they weren't allowed to review the ballots, the envelopes, until January 4th. And then after that, uh, you know, it's also been just delays in terms of getting responses. Uh, I mean, my role in this has been more of that of a reporter. I wasn't, I was still working for the Department of Justice at the time when the audit was done. But, uh, you know, I wrote to uh, the director of elections here, and it was only when local reporters uh, from a local radio station contacted him that he finally got back to me and began to answer some of my questions. Oh, so, Doc. Dr. Lott, there you go. The power of local radio. Thank you for that great plug for the John Fredericks Radio Network, Dr. Lott. Thank you. In Montana, believes. People in can the find power more at our re website at crimeresearch.org. Thank you, and good luck in Montana. We're going to have you back to follow up. Thank you. Up next, running for governor, Virginia, Pete Snyder, bringing the heat. Keep it right here.